From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Bayou Wild. It's a beautiful day in the Madisonville neighborhood here at Morton Seafood Restaurant. I'm Don Dubuque, along with the captain, Martha Spencer, and we had a fantastic, kind of an oddball trip last week. We sure did. You know, catfishing, usually we do it a little later in the season, but since the river's been so high, we took advantage of that high water, and we headed down to the Mississippi River in kayaks to do a little catfishing from lines, and wait till you see these fish. Not only is it fun, it's a great way to get a lot of good fish to eat, too. We do this in a, like late April, early May. Um, usually, the, the, the entire month of May is when the river comes up every year. Today's haul was—I mean, you can't you can't really beat that. Those are perfect eater-sized catfish. But there was one year that the back of Eric's kayak was underwater. We had a ridiculous amount of like 20 and 30-pound catfish in it. I mean, we were cleaning fish for like five, six hours, I mean, that long. And if you've heard the story of the canary in the coal mine to the barometer of what things are doing there environmentally, we also have a warbler in the marsh that kind of does the same thing. We have a special guest going to take us there. Yeah, biologist Natalie Waters explains the migratory patterns of the warbler. Um, one of the reasons why we're studying this species is although it's not a species uh, that is endangered or threatened, it is a species of conservation concern. Um, since the 1960s, there's been around a 40% decline in the overall population of this bird. So by introducing nest boxes into um, the correct habitat, you could help increase uh, nest success for the species. And then we take you down to Port Eads. Well, not really all the way to Port Eads. It's a recipe from Port Eads. If you find yourself a little short on resources and you want something good to eat fish-wise, stay tuned. We got it coming up for you. Usually you want to cook seafood between 350 and 375. On this recipe, you want to keep it at about 320, 325 because pancake batter doesn't have the same tolerance for heat as cornmeal does, and it could easily burn. And you, could, you test this by the color. When you see it turning that, that golden brown color like a pancake, that's time to come on out of there. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. I won this boat fish in the CCA Star Tournament. I felt so real for about a week. <laughs> My name is Amelia and I'm from Abbeville and I won this boat. There's 100 redfish waiting. It all starts Memorial Day weekend. Sign up today. Hi, I'm Miss Louisiana Holly Conway on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. I'm sure you know that clean, affordable propane gas is used in houses across our state. It's used in cooking, hot water heaters, drying clothes, and heating homes. But did you know that if you ever run out of propane, you need a certified dealer to inspect your system for leaks before it's refilled? That's the law. Propane is a safe and exceptional energy source, and we want to keep it that way. Bayou Wild. We're going catfishing out of the kayaks. Hey 
The iconic whooping crane is back in Louisiana. If you spot a whooping crane, remember, observe and admire it from a distance and always report any harmful activity. You can always help the Louisiana whooping cranes thrive by donating to LAWFF.org. Thank you to Chevron and the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation for their generous support. You know, Martha, anyone who's ever read Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, Becky, Jim, all those books about catching catfish on the river on the raft, we did about the closest thing you can do to yes. that. We went catfishing out of Hobie kayaks. Don't worry, where we were was safe. That's a very important part to stress. Also, it's important to know that this was a team effort. Six of us went out there. Two folks went out and baited the lines the night before, and it took an entire group effort to secure these fish. And wait till you see the size of these catfish we got on the mighty Mississippi. Catfish, one of the most underutilized fish in Louisiana, and we're catching them in one of the most underfished places in the state. Well, there's several ways you can do it. Of course, you can use rod and reel, uh, like a Carolina rig, or you can use this setup right here. This is about a 4050 -oh, -oh hook on it, I'd say, circle hook. And you put your piece of meat on there, your piece of bait. But when the fish grabs it, you can kind of hear that piece of rebar go down. And then when you when you got a fish, you'll see it bobbing up and down like that. Is there another one back there, uh, Marsha? What color is it? Green? Just when I think I've done it all. Think apotamus. <laughs> ah! You settle down. People shove their arms up in these things? <laughs> what are they thinking? Uh, I've never actually caught a freshwater catfish. Although with the river being high, a lot of folks I know that inshore fish have been landing a rare blue cat or two. But nobody I know really ever goes to target them. And apparently the best way to do it is without a fishing pole. That big. Hobie team, Chris and Eric went out yesterday with uh, two different types of bait, circle hooks, so they set themselves when they eat the bait. Uh, half of them had shad and half of them had bonita, and it was a neat experiment to see uh, if they were going to eat what was in the river versus what was in the gulf, and it really didn't matter because they ate it all. Uh, they're out on pool noodles, those little foam things about a foot long, tied to a string with the hook and the bait and maybe a little lead, and then tied to a tree. So kind of like you would with alligator hunting and baiting alligators, you look for the float that's sticking up. Check them all and if it's moving, you likely have a fish. I started catfishing probably around 2011. Um, I've lived three blocks off the river my entire life and one day I just kind of was like, you know, I bet you there's really big catfish in the river. So I started bank fishing and one day I was out there when the river was high in the spring and I'm like, you know, I bet I could get a kayak and go out there and just go set jug lines. And that's just really kind of how it started. And, you know, here we are seven years later, you know, I've got the Hobie Compass, I've got much, much better noodles set up. And um, I've met a whole lot of uh, Chris and Eric, for instance, a whole lot of really, really great people through the kayak community and have even gotten into inshore fishing just out of going catfishing in the river. In the river, I don't suggest anybody get in it unless they're highly experienced. 
because it is a very dangerous place. This isn't something you want to just come out and do. Woo! That's a fatty. <laughs> Woo, this is a good fish. He's about 10 pounds. We had to dig him out of the bushes because he got wrapped up. So your average blue cat, and this one ate on Bonita. But like you could go to Toledo Bend, for instance, or, or Okissa, or, or uh, Can Caney, or places like that, or anywhere that's a large pond or something, and you could throw your noodles out, which would be much more safer, and I highly suggest doing that. It's hard to find a skinny catfish because they eat everything. So even our smallest ones have big bellies on them and uh, they clearly don't go hungry out here. I don't think they're too selective on what they eat based on what we fed them. And I'm kind of curious what's in their stomachs also and what they're eating around here. But our smallest one might be five pounds and our biggest maybe 35. Yeah, it's got a big, oh, yeah. small one. Oh, 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 that's a big one. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Oh, that's a flathead. Oh, that's a gooyong. We got a gooyong. <laughs> Come on, Guya. Come on in. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, free ride. Notice the family resemblance. We do this in a, like late April, early May. Um, usually the, the, the entire month of May is when the river comes up every year. Today's haul was, I mean, you can't, you can't really beat that. Those are perfect eater sized catfish, but there was one year that the back of Eric's kayak was underwater. We had a ridiculous amount of like 20 and 30 pound catfish. John, they range anywhere from 10 pounds to 60 pounds, but there are larger ones out here. We've had hooks like these and stronger straightened out. You know, come back and seen them straighten these lines. This is what, a 350 pound cord, or the cord like they use on trawl nets to weave trawl nets with, and we've had these broken. So who knows how big they are. to be really experienced to go um, even in the batcher. I mean, you guys saw how the current was pulling us around today. If you can go in the spillway on the airline side, you know, that's there year round. Um, just any small ponds, streams, lakes. But if you go in the river, you need to be really experienced and don't go alone. You know, um, we've been doing this for years and we only don't ever come alone out here ever and don't think it's just easy to jump in and do it because it's not. You gotta be very, very safe, highly experienced. So that's the story on catching cats in the Mississippi River. The only thing left now is get the hush puppies ready. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. I've been using Louisiana fish fry products so much, even the kids are getting into it. Funny about 
clam boil a great crawfish every time. And whether you're boiling crawfish, shrimp, or crabs, Louisiana Fish Fry products use the perfect blend of garlic, onion, spices, and salt for your seafood boil. So look for the bright yellow bag and pour and boil with Louisiana Fish Fry products. Louisiana's Barataria Terrebonne Estuary System, the area of the state located between the Mississippi and the Atchafalaya Rivers, could possibly be one of the most diverse ecosystems along the Gulf Coast. And if you've spent just a small amount of time exploring this area, you are bound to notice the abundance of birds that claim this vital habitat. One of those species is the Prothonotary Warbler, Louisiana in particular um, is especially important for uh, breeding habitat for this species. It's estimated that a quarter of the breeding population breeds right here in Louisiana. These tiny yellow and gray migratory songbirds rely on South Louisiana bayous as nesting grounds in late spring and early summer. Um, one of the reasons why we're studying this species is although it's not a species uh, that is endangered or threatened, it is a species of conservation concern. Um, since the 1960s, there's been around a 40% decline in the overall population of this bird. So by introducing nest boxes into um, the correct habitat, you could help increase uh, nest success for the species. And for the past several years, biologists are using research of the prothonotary warbler to determine ways to improve habitat for all migratory bird species. Um, the uh, estuary program put out around 75 boxes that we monitor each breeding season. Um, the males begin to arrive in late March and the females show up shortly after and we monitor um, these boxes through the breeding season usually till um, mid-July and uh, by August these birds will start preparing to make their migratory journey back to their wintering grounds. Three eggs. With this project, researchers capture the warblers at their nesting boxes. Then they apply a small numeric tracking band and also record measurements, weight, and other vital statistics. So by blowing the feathers around, I could see her skin and see the fat content and also see if there's any pin feathers forming. See where the feathers are missing? So during the breeding season, the females will lose those feathers so she could um, incubate her eggs and young. It's, it's supposed to help with the heat transfer. Um, the males of this species do not have that brood patch. What is fascinating is that through these bands, the scientists have learned that the birds have a keen sense of location when migrating, leaving their nesting grounds in Louisiana in August to return to their wintering grounds in Central and South America. They have high site fidelity, which that means they'll come back to the same breeding area and the same wintering area each year. They travel thousands of miles and they can hone in on this one individual nest box. I've had several females now that I, they ended in 2016 and they come back to the same box or one near it um, every year. That's pretty cool. Over 400 plus species of birds have been uh, found within Louisiana in our estuary. Estuaries are one of the most productive ecosystems on our planet and specifically uh, Louisiana and our estuary. So for neotropical migrants, even the ones that don't stay here, it provides refuge to, for them to stop and refuel along the way. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Hello, my friends. This is Louisiana native Zachary Richard. I cherish the outdoor experiences that make our state so special. And for the first time in over 60 years, 
hooping cranes are back in Louisiana. Wildlife and fisheries need your help as these beautiful birds resettle in our state. If you spot a hooping crane, observe it from a distance, and if you witness anyone harming one of these very special birds, call the number on the screen. This message is underwritten by Chevron. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Sometimes you want to cook a dish with fish that's very simple, easy, quick with just a few ingredients. Well, we got one for you today. It's called Aunt Jemima's Port Eads Fried Fish. And of course, Aunt Jemima's original pancake batter is the key. This will work on a number of species of fish. Uh, the ones I have a favorite with is sockele, or white perch, whatever you want to call them. Also, the mangrove snapper is an excellent fish for the use for this recipe. Today, I'm using halibut because I've got it. This is still from our Cajun invasion trip to Alaska. And what I've done is just rinse these fillets off in cold water. That's all, no egg wash, nothing else and then just dust them lightly into the pancake batter. Another thing about that pancake batter, make sure when you're getting an Aunt Jemima's, you get Aunt Jemima's original. You don't want anything with blueberries in it or anything else, just the plain, original Aunt Jemima's pancake batter. Now, the story of where this recipe came from and how it's got its name is pretty interesting. Uh, the story goes from the person that gave me this recipe was there was a, a crew down at Port Eads, which is down near the mouth of the river below Venice. And as you can imagine, years ago, supplies were hard to come by and they had caught some fish and they basically didn't have anything to, to fry the fish with. But they did have pancake batter because they had been cooking pancakes for breakfast. So they substituted this and lo and behold, they discovered a great new dish. And we're going to fry it up in a minute and show you just how easy it is. And when you're frying the fish in this recipe, it's very, very important to get the temperature of your oil proper. Usually you want to cook seafood between 350, 375. On this recipe, you want to keep it at about 320, 325, because pancake batter doesn't have the same tolerance for heat as cornmeal does, and it could easily burn. And you, could, you test this by the color. When you see it turning that, that golden brown color like a pancake, that's time to come on out of there. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. The final step in this very short process is melt the stick of butter, and these green onions are optional. Uh, I'm particularly a big fan of green onion, but you can go with or without them. You simply pour that mixture over your fish fillets for that great pancake sweet and buttery taste. This is good, as I said, sockele, snapper, any white flaky fish will do, and get that unique taste that only Aunt your mama can do.
my neighbor Tony, he looked at me and said, man, you're crazy. You're about to leave out in this weather. And I said, sir, I have a tag fish to go catch. I won this beautiful boat catching a tag red fish in Venice, Louisiana. There's 100 redfish waiting. It all starts Memorial Day weekend. Sign up today. Whooping cranes are back in Louisiana. Through the hard work of biologists and key strategic partners, whooping cranes have been restored back to the cultural icon they once held. But you can still help. To donate to the Whooping Crane program, visit LAWFF.org. Thank you to Chevron and the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation for their generous support. So catfishing, you got to get your hands dirty and you have to have people to watch your back as well. Never go at it alone and definitely figure out what you're doing before you head out there to get yourself a bowl of catfish. Well, those orange bibs serves a double purpose. Oh yeah, I wear those anytime you get any fish around and they were a good thing. And if you handy. happen to go overboard, you're easy to find. Right? Absolutely, <laughs> you can't miss me. All right, don't forget you can always find us here at Madisonville. Mondays we come out here and take the show at Morton Seafood Restaurant and Bar. Give them a call and check out what days and times we'll be here. But until then, if you want to keep up with us. Check us out on social media. We have a Bayou Wild Instagram page, a Facebook page. And of course, you can check out all the full-length shows and recipes on our YouTube channel. Just search Bayou Wild TV. And don't forget, get your shirts and your hats, Bayou Wild Collection.